Welcome to today's video. Uh, today we're going to talk about LS Droid and Tuner Pro again, but we're going to step it back a notch and we're going to talk about what you absolutely have to have to get started so that way you can tune your uh, PCM for your LS swap or whatever other project you got going on and you can do it for next to free. It's uh, $50 to get your foot in the door, but once you buy it, you're done. There's no credits, no licensing, nothing like that. So you get to continue to do this for free. So first, let's talk about the tools that you have to have. There's two you absolutely have to have. There's a third one that you really should have, and you probably already do. First, you need to have an Android device, like a cell phone or tablet, because the LS Droid app runs on Android, as the name would hint. And you're going to need a Bluetooth dongle, uh, OBD2 dongle, that you can use in between the two. There's only, like, two different ones that are supported. Uh, you have your OBD Link brand ones, which there's a couple of them in the family, but I have the OBD Link LX, but there's also the MX and a couple of other ones. And then you also have the one that uh, Pete S160 Plus, that's his uh, YouTube channel name and the kind of the username he uses across the internet. Uh, he makes and sells one. He's also the guy that made the application. His runs a lot faster on the application, but those are the only two that are really supported are either the OBD links or the um, the one that he makes. If you try some of the random ones, it just won't even work. The software will just say uh, that it's a supported device isn't found. So uh, the, the, you are a little bit kind of in a constraint there of what works, but these really aren't terribly expensive. It's $50 to get mine on Amazon, two day shipping, uh, and I was able to get started there. The, uh, the third tool that you need is a computer, which you probably already have. Uh, Windows computer works great because uh, then you can download Tuner Pro and do more tuning with it. So within the application of LS Droid, you can actually do segment swaps, which is where you just take like you know one part of one OS and swap them around uh, between two. So you just take like one tune that you know is a good tune and just move part of it into that one. Uh, that's how I'd explain segment swaps. I really haven't played with them myself, uh, but that's just how you could do that in in the application. So you don't have to have a computer do it. You can also do cloning and stuff like that without a computer. Uh, but to get into Tuner Pro, you you do have to have a computer to run that on. Uh, another one that it's not a necessarily a tool that you have to have, but I highly recommend it is to build yourself a bench harness and do this on the bench because if you're using this, it's going to take 22 minutes to run on a P59 and it's going to take uh, 11 minutes on a on a P01. The P01 has a smaller memory, that's why it's faster on there. Um, so if you're using his, uh, uh, when I say his, I'm, I mean uh, if you're using P160 plus um, his, his dongle that he makes and sells it's about half the time uh, I think it's ex actually exactly half the time that he cut it into I don't know if that's something he's doing in the software or if his has uh, more memory in it uh, I might I might buy one of his and take it apart uh, I know he really doesn't want anybody to do that though so I may just not do that because I do like this uh, this open source program. I don't really want to piss him off and make him quit doing stuff for people. Uh, he's very secretive about uh, hardware stuff for some reason. Uh, but uh, that's besides the point. So let's uh, let's then get into the software. Okay, so let's take a look at where we're gonna find this software at for our Android device. Uh, and quick recommendation on your Android device: either use your like flagship phone, but I don't really recommend using your phone because then you could get interrupted while you're trying to do this stuff. Um, or get a cheap Amazon Fire tablet or something like that. Uh, I would not recommend rummaging through your old drawer and finding, you know, just an old cell phone that you don't use anymore. Uh, there's been a lot of reports of glitches with older cell phones on this whole app application. So... A lot of good uh, positive reports with the Amazon products. So just go with them. They're cheap enough. I got the kids one for Christmas for like $45. So yeah, it's a cheap option. But yeah, so my screen's right there. That's why I'm pointing there. Uh, we're going to get on Google and we're going to pull up LS Droid. Just type it in there and you'll find this website. And you just pull it up on your cell phone. 
download the application. It's going to be an APK, and you just execute it and install it, and you're good to go. After you get LS Droid, then you know hook up your dongle, go ahead and read it. You're good to go. But once you get the bin off of there, which is going to be the dump of the data, it's actually flash data, not EEPROM. I was so tempted to say EEPROM, but from the flash data, you'll have your bin saved on your cell phone. You can hook up your cell phone to your computer, and then you're going to go into Tuner Pro, which you just go to the tunerpro.net, uh, pull it up, go to the download page, and you download the latest version, and it is free to download, free. They do like donations, and you can just go ahead and run that. And so I already have them installed on the computer, so I'm not going to run through the installation process. But Tuner Pro website straight out of 2010, and that's because that's when he made it. Um, he, he's continued to support it for quite a while now. Um, like the latest release was March 1st of 2019. It's a, it's a really good software. It's free. It's not open source, and I did misspeak before. Uh, LS Droid is not open source either. Um, so neither of these are open source software. They're just free. Uh, I've just become so accustomed to free software being open source lately that uh, I confused that earlier in the video so my apologies on that so we got them downloaded I've already showed you it on the phone in the other video if you haven't seen it go check that video out let's take a look at tuner pro real quick on the computer just to get you accustomed to what I'm about to bring up the next thing that you're gonna run into with these and this is really the next chapter of this video where we're what we're talking about here is i've i've now covered the hardware that you need the software that you need now we need to talk about community support because this uh tuner pro is a community driven uh software that you're going to need some community support for there's no tech support that you're going to call and get them to help you so i'm in tuner pro up here and you're going to load your bin, whatever bin you have. Let's see, I should have some around here. This is the one I played with in the last video. So we'll open it up. And since I know I have the correct XDF up, we can go ahead and take a look at this. But you, it, if you haven't loaded any XDFs in, you're not going to be able to see any of this. So you can go into your calibration segment and just verify that you got the right one. But this is where the community comes in, is, is getting the correct XDF. So you actually have to... The, do some research to find these. They're not. There's not just some awesome repository yet. Somebody needs to come out and make one. One of you guys need to take some time and make us a repository of all these XDFs because you know people are making them here and there, um, and they, there's a, there's a lot of disbursement of them, and they're kind of hard to find. So the XDF is what a, another community member has created that gives you all of these different parameters. Basically what they do is they go in, they look at everything in assembly language and figure out what needs to be edited and how to edit it. That's the whole purpose of the XDF because once you dump that bin, it's all in assembly. I'm getting in deeper than I really should in this video. This is just getting started. So we're not going to dive that deep, but we are going to get into the XDFs and where to find them on community. Okay, so now we're into community. So there's two main forums that I use for this. There's also a Facebook group. It's just called LS Droid. Just get on Facebook, find it. It's run by Pete, whatever his username was. Um, so Gearhead EFI is one of the main forums that I used to use. I used it all the time back when I was doing... Uh, I used to tune the, uh, the old OBD1 stuff. I had a tune port injected... Uh, kit off a of Camaro that I had installed in an S10. So I used to use this form a lot, and there's a lot of really good knowledge on here. I haven't used it so much lately. Uh, PCM Hacking has been the form that I've been on a lot. They have a sub forum for all of these engines, and you can already see, just pulling it up, uh, NSFW, uh, not safe for work, uh, I guess. Uh, he did a lot of work on PCM Hammer and a couple of other things, and he's uh, uploaded a small repository of XDFs. They're not all in there. It's not all inclusive. They're just not all in there. Um, I have forked it. I haven't changed, added, or removed anything from it. I just think there was some concern of some um, uh, 
th there were some IP law concerns in it, so I was afraid. He, he wrote removed, but they were actually still in there. But before he realized that he didn't delete them, I wanted to fork it and get them over, so that way I at least have them, and you can have them too. Uh, if if, um, if so, you you can pull up my GitHub or you can pull up his. It's it's uh, board truck owner uh, is his. Uh, the, the original, and he may have uploaded more since I forked it. Yeah, 12 days ago, he was in there. Um, yeah, and then so your third option for finding XDFs is to just Google, you know, whichever one. Let's see. Um, let me think of. Let's let's just do uh, XDF. There we go. Uh, and then that would be how you would find it. So you're gonna put your OSID. And your XDF. And remember, uh, from the other video that I did on this, when you download things in LS Droid, when you pull it up in LS Droid and you connect to the PCM, it's going to tell you what your OSID is. So write that down so that way you can, before you waste all your time downloading. If it's, if it's going to take you 22 minutes to download it, you might as well get that uh, OSID and go see if you're going to be able to tune it uh, and go from there. But that's, that's all is what I'm going to get into on Tuner Pro uh, for this video because we're not actually going to do any tuning in this video. This is just how do you get started and get, get hooked up so that way you can do this stuff yourself. There's a lot of research that you're going to have to do uh, to, to start tuning these, so it's not appropriate for me to start diving into it in this video. Uh, so yeah, you need LS Droid, you need Tuner Pro. You're going to need you a dongle that you can talk to it with. You're going to need a Android device uh, so that way you can run uh, LS Droid. Some of the other things you can do with LS Droid and uh, they're not popular with the community. The community will get really upset with you if you start talking on the forums about doing it. Is you can clone PCMs, which, okay, cool, you can clone a stock one, not a big deal. But let's say somebody had uh, HP tuners on there, got their full tune going on, and you got the same setup, you got the ca same cam and all of that going on. You can technically clone their PCM, and in theory, it will work in your car. So, I mean, that t depends on if they have VATs turned on or whatever. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the HP Tuner OS to know much about it. But, yeah, when HP Tuners tunes your thing, it's not just changing, you know, the VE tables or anything like that. It's actually a whole other operating system. It's a custom operating system it's written by HP tuners. It's all proprietary, so you're definitely pirating at that point if you do something like that. So just doing something like that would be technically illegal. Uh, another thing that's in theory possible, but I don't know if anyone's done it, is you could also reverse engineer EFI, EFI Live or P, uh, whatever, you know, whatever tune that they're using, HP Tuners, EFI Live, uh, you could reverse engineer their OS and do whatever you wanted with it. Uh, again, now you're stepping into uh, the no-no area, <laughs> I guess is how we'd put this. Okay, so this concludes the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and got inspired to take on tuning your computer. Uh, one last thing I wanted to add on at the end here that I forgot to mention before in the video is that uh, really it's it's 99 to 07 stuff that's uh, supported. There's some of the 98 to like 05 V6s. I, I don't remember the exact years on the V6s. I have no interest in tuning them. Uh, and like 01 to 04 dirty maxes uh, can be tuned with the same software. So, yeah, if you are a programmer, please take the time. Do some reverse engineering. I, when I say a programmer, that's pretty vague. If you know assembly language, um, <laughs> come take apart some of these OSs and help us well, help the community out with making more XDFs. There's a ton of OSs that are not supported yet. Most of them are kind of niche, you know, not on a bunch of different vehicles. Uh, but the more stuff that gets supported, the more stuff reasons there are to support. Other ones, the 07 new body style and up, oh, not supported at all. 
uh, if you start to get those operating systems where you can get into them, you get people interested in, in doing stuff to it. Uh, I'm sure there'd be a ton of people interested to get into that OS and, you know, turn off the displacement on demand and stuff like that. So, you know, there's stuff to learn. But yeah, that's beyond the point of this video. I think if you're that level of uh, programmer, you're probably not watching this. Uh, but uh, yeah, go ahead and thumbs up the video if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Leave a comment. Subscribe. That'd be great. I'll see you guys in the next video.